Coming up on Mountain News this morning, as Election Day approaches, the candidates are making last-minute stops across the Commonwealth. And Kentucky Sports Radio fundraise for flood efforts in a partnership with the Kentucky Chamber Foundation. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 532 on October 31st. Now let's check in with Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. And Brandon, as the kiddos get out to trick or treat tonight, they're going to need a jacket because it is cold. Layers will be your friend later, I can tell you that. So just be ready for that. Kids, adults, everybody, but this morning, same thing. Pikeville, US 119, US 23 intersection. A little bit of light traffic out there this morning. No major issues, maybe a touch of fog, but the story this morning, and it's not going to move a whole lot today, is going to be the temperatures. We're looking at temperatures basically in the 30s and 40s across the region there. 40 in Pikeville right now. Prestonsburg, Jackson, London, the same. 45, one of the warmer spots over in Harlan. Still a few clouds out there, areas that are not seeing as many clouds. Moorhead and Irvin, 36, 33, Lexington and Louisville. So some 30s out there this morning. Your app cast for today, we're looking again at some changing conditions, but it's not going to be a very nice day until a little bit later on in the day. Some sunshine will appear, but temperatures, they're not going to move too much. Only upper 40s for daytime highs, maybe getting close to 50 as we see some sunshine peak out a little bit later on. Olivia. All right, thank you, Brandon. It's been one year since London Police Sergeant Logan Medlock was killed by an alleged drunk driver. Casey Bird, the man charged in the deadly crash, appeared in court yesterday. A judge set the trial for April of next year, also granting a change of venue to Bowling Green. On the one year anniversary, Sergeant Medlock's memory is also being honored by the police department. Officers held a run in his office in his honor, passing the courthouse Monday morning, London's police chief says the anniversary is bringing back difficult memories from a year ago. You know, all of the emotions that uh, that we experienced that day, you know, the, the moment that we found out, the moment that we heard about it come, you know, come flooding back for me and I'm, I'm sure for everybody else. Uh, it was such a tragic time, uh, such a tragic event. A new monument is now at the spot where Sergeant Medlock was killed. Yesterday, family and friends celebrated the life of WYMT's former general sales manager, Jim Boggs. The, surgeon, the service was at Maggard's Mountain View Chapel in Hazard, and several former WYMT employees were there with the Boggs family, celebrating a life well lived and remembering the wonderful legacy that Boggs leaves behind. I think he'll be remembered for that smile and uh, j just from his sense of humor and, uh, you know, like I say, just being a, a real decent guy and, and a great, great salesperson. Boggs worked for WIMT for 25 years from 1990 until his retirement in 2015. He was 75 years old. Whitesburg Fire Department Assistant Fire Chief Joe Back has died. We are told Back had a massive heart attack and was transported to Pikeville Medical Center, where he was eventually taken off life support. Officials say Back had served in emergency services since the mid-1980s. First responders escorted him back from Pikeville to Whitesburg yesterday. Funeral arrangements are pending. Governor Andy Bashir was here in the mountains yesterday. The governor was in London to begin his stops in eastern Kentucky, then made a stop at Hazard Coffee Company. He later paid a visit to Salyersville. Bashir was making stops as part of his Go Vote tour, which we will hear more about from him in just a little bit. Bashir's challenger, Attorney General Daniel Cameron, is also on a bus tour across the state. He was in Paintsville yesterday. On Friday, he stopped by WIMT to record issues and answers. He said despite polls showing him behind, he feels good about his chances on election night. We're going to win on November 7th, and this Commonwealth's going to have a new governor. And I'm excited about making sure that we restore 
Kentucky values to the governor's office and have a governor who's going to address the issue of violent crime and make sure that we have a world-class education system and eliminate Kentucky's income tax. So it's uh, been a, a long road, a long journey, uh, but we certainly feel very good uh, about the opportunity before us, and uh, we're just going to keep pushing all the way through the finish line. Attorney General Cameron will make stops in Pikeville, Hazard, and London today. With the general election a week away in Kentucky, Secretary of State Michael Adams is urging voters to beat the lines and vote early. Monday, he reminded everyone no excuse early voting will run from Thursday through Saturday. Adams urged both candidates for governor to promote voting early, which was passed with bipartisan support back in 2021. We have more information about early voting on our website at WYMT.com. A groundbreaking ceremony was held for a new hotel project in Corbin. Leaders also broke ground on a three and a half million dollar expansion of the Corbin Center. It was made possible by a public private partnership. The hotel project includes a town place suites and Fairfield Inn and suites with conference room space. Senate President Robert Stivers says he was excited for the possibilities. This creates an in additional jobs and more tourism. FEMA has approved funding for a culvert repair in Harlan County after one road was heavily damaged during the July 2022 flood. The award money will be awarded through the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and is targeted to fix a box culvert under Kentucky 522 west of ever so hollow road in Cumberland. FEMA officials said the culvert once installed will be roughly twice the size of the one which was damaged in the flood. Kentucky Sports Radio partnered with the Kentucky Chamber Foundation to raise money for flood relief efforts in eastern Kentucky. They presented checks to three organizations at the Appalachian Regional Healthcare Flood Distribution Center. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox talked to organization leaders about how the money will be used. More than $300,000 worth of checks were presented to three organizations through Kentuckians who could give 20, 25, 50 dollars to really help out their fellow Kentuckians here in Eastern Kentucky. And so we've raised quite a bit of money and a lot of it was these very small donations. The money went to the Housing Development Alliance, ARH and Homes Incorporated. HDA received $215,000 for flood repairs. The best thing about that is it, it's flexible and so we can use it to plug gaps and little you know, things that we can't find other money for. Homes Incorporated received $70,000, which will also be used as flexible spending and flood repairs. We're going to use it to leverage other funding to help more spread our circle of work to help more people. Appalachian Regional Healthcare received $50,000. CEO Holly Harris says that will go towards scholarships for students in the health profession. So these are young people going to community college for jobs like medical assistance, respiratory tech, surgical techs, so much needed careers and jobs here in eastern Kentucky and throughout the ARH system. Harris also says ARH recently purchased more than $200,000 worth of household appliances for flood survivors still rebuilding. In Hazard, Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Housing Development Alliance Executive Director Scott McReynolds says they have completed 16 homes for flood survivors with 11 more under construction and more being planned. Coming up, Sylvester Stallone has a new documentary on Netflix detailing his career as an actor and a writer. And the forecast continues to stay chilly across our region for the next couple of days, but a warm-up is on the way. I'll tell you about it in about three minutes.